Hey, everybody. It's amazing to be with you. Uh, startups, you guys are my people. All right, so I am very interested in how we unlock collective genius, how we change these systems by finding all of you and helping you do your things all over the world. And what I wanted to start with is, you know, it's a time when almost everybody is talking about artificial intelligence, and I actually wanted to start with human intelligence. And how many people have ever seen the movie Moana? Yes, no, a couple of people, people might have little kids. Uh, but I wanted to share that it's actually a true story. Like people in the Polynesian region, is anybody here from Polynesia? Yes, Hawaii, yes, places, yeah, okay, thank you. Um, people can sail on a boat like this with no instruments. And Hawaii recently came back from a three year journey around the world. So like, think about that, like how about this row? We'll just go on that little canoe, middle of the Pacific, which way do we go? Right? Isn't that amazing to think that humans can sail dead reckon with no compass, just watching the stars being connected to the Earth? These are some of the master navigators now. They were apprentices, uh, but have learned this incredible technique that has come through the centuries. And when Hawaii came home, when the teams came home from the Hukulea, all the Hawaiians came to meet them, and I loved how they started just thinking about their island, right? The canoe is an island, them as an island, us as island Earth. And what we can do uh, with all our communities and how to include everyone. One of my favorite ones was the University of Hawaii president called a grand challenge to all the children. He said, you know, behind Waikiki, we have this really polluted canal called Alawai. So we're gonna have the Alawai awesome challenge. What do you guys got for how we're gonna fix this? And these are some of the winners there. So history, coral experts, and others. You know, we saw the, the challenges in the United States in Standing Rock with the Dakota Access Pipeline trying to come across their land and what people did. Um, the Native Americans, of course, have extraordinary knowledge and skill. And one of the things we were recently able to launch was uh, a program with MIT that's an MIT Solve program looking for solvers, entrepreneurs, solution makers. And these are Lakota folks uh, from Pine Ridge and Standing Rock doing just great work. So there's entrepreneurs, of course, everywhere. Um, this is Henry Radcloud, he's working on solar, you know, incredible breakthroughs in agriculture, new ways of physically living together. And so taking our native and indigenous and key human knowledge and making sure we're blending it with what we hope for the future, that the values that we have as humanity are gonna come through our code and not a lot of biases and discrimination. When we were working with President Obama, we, uh, we held a, a final culmination conference which was called Frontiers. We launched the reports on AI. We had done town halls all over the country looking at law and policy and, and uh, safety and control and applying AI to a lot more places. One of the key things in the findings on AI is that we didn't have enough of it. We used it for like precision medicine and self-driving cars and all these topics, but we weren't using it to solve poverty, justice, all of the topics of the day. And this was a look at frontiers for us as humanity. The first one is uh, frontiers like uh, personal frontiers, personalized learning, personalized medicine, local frontiers, not just smart cities, but wise communities, the smart wise city. Uh, looking at our national frontiers, looking at global and climate change and environmental transition, can we, can we find and replace you know, the fossil fuels into the green future? And then interplanetary. But I'd say, that even though all that truth is there, this is how people are feeling, right? People are worried about being unneeded. And we have to really embrace that. Like these, some of you might feel that way. Probably you guys are really, you've jumped into this world of entrepreneurship and you're like cup half full. But there's a lot of people around you who are nervous. And so what is it that we wanna do? What do we wanna be? How do we wanna be in the future? You know, today most of the, the um, governments are really struggling. This is a picture for the United States. So in 1953, this is a picture, it's an animation from Business Insider, I encourage you to look at it. Congress used to vote together, the US Congress. So you can see blue and red for Democratic, Republican, but you can see the voting in the grayscale here all along until suddenly we get sort of cable news and then on into the internet. Look how separated we are. We're in our fiefdoms of media and our technology is now accelerating these separations, it's a huge problem. Uh, I don't know, have, has, have people heard of Kathy O'Neill and the Weapons of Math Destruction work? Yeah, people have looked at it. Really encourage you, watch this TED Talk. It won't take much time, it'll change your life. Because it'll wake you up to the kinds of discrimination that can happen with, with kind of this black box of all hail the algorithm. 
you know, just like the savings and loans and other challenges, the housing crisis where we just let the derivatives go and we're not paying attention to the math. What can we do collectively to make sure that we don't have these challenges? Joy Bulam Winnie, uh, amazing MIT Media Lab graduate student who um, sadly was trying to be recognized by the camera on her computer, couldn't see her. So she put on a white face and it saw her immediately. So the camera in your pocket is racist. Did you ever notice when you have to take a picture of someone of color, a little bit darker skin, you have to turn on the flash? That's true for face recognition too. What are we gonna do about it? Let's make sure everybody's in and Joy has the Algorithmic Justice League. I'm a member, I hope you guys will join. This is interesting data about artificial intelligence showing some of the industries and, that are gonna grow you know, 2030 but it feels kind of imbalanced. It's only certain industries, because when I look at the goals, I think about the sustainable development goals from the United Nations. Not just certain commercial ones, but what about all the goals? Why wouldn't the best technologies in the world and all of us working on them be for just about anything? This is another one that I reflect on sometimes too. So the markets for AI are gonna go to certain countries. Well, like, I don't know if you can notice, but like, where the hell is Africa? Right, and what's going on there? When I was in, in Google, we had this amazing map that people had hooked up to the search engines. And uh, this was Google traffic, and it's showing really cool stuff. You can see sort of English and Spanish, and wherever there's humans, there's searching going on. You see the internet is connected in many places. But when it came around here, Europe is pounding, and look at the continent of Africa. Lots of aid dollars, why isn't going into broadband? We have so many talented people here, we need everybody here. So one of the things I'd share with you that we learned, we found this coin. This is the first penny in the United States and it's, it's called the Liberty Penny. And if you look at American coins, they have liberty on them, but they don't say the second phrase. This is a phrase from Franklin and Jefferson and Washington. See what it says? Liberty is the parent of science and industry. So they speak to us. Washington said, there's nothing which better deserves your patronage than science and literature. He was speaking to Congress in the first state of the Union. He said, knowledge in every country is the surest form of public happiness. Fake news, knowledge, science, technology, liberty. They're related. And it's not partisan. You know, here's Grace Hopper. How many people know Grace Hopper? Who knows Grace Hopper? Grace Hopper is an Edison-level American, amazing leader who uh, invented coding languages. You know, it's whether it's President Obama, President Reagan, it doesn't matter. Technology um, is, is part of all of the countries moving forward. So back to the goals, one of the things we did was we put up a post on the United Nations and we said, who already has solutions? Like the Startup Grind community, who's already doing this work? And we've got over a thousand submissions uh, from 134 countries in two weeks. So people flying drones to plant a billion trees a year. People teaching law in prison in Uganda to get people out of jail. People could get themselves out of jail. You know, Burkina Faso, princess mechanical engineer, I'll say that again for Disney, princess mechanical engineer. Uh, doing solar lighting. And over here, uh, Beno Juarez from the Amazon, grew up in, as an indigenous person there for nine years and then went and learned all about advanced manufacturing is bringing fab labs and floating advanced manufacturing to the Amazon so the people there don't have to cut down trees but can invent the future with us. So this is a, a picture from the science fair in the White House. Um, these little girls are from Oklahoma and the president came up to him and he said, you know, what'd you guys make? They made a page turning robot. And he said, uh, how'd you guys do that? And they said, we had a brainstorm. And so he said, really? And then he said, well, then what? We made some prototypes. So what if every kid on this planet could work with their friends, wear capes, and then work on prototypes and brainstorming and be kind of brought into this future in an apprentice journey mastery way? So I want to talk to you really quickly about the challenges they face. They face bias. And the data we're gonna train on is biased. This is just from movies. That's men's lines to women's lines in children's film, and when we grow up, we make men's lines to women's lines in 2,000 films. That's movies, but it's also the meetings you're in, it's the books you're reading, it's the stages you're seeing. We've gotta work on this bias. Because Ada Lovelace did really invent coding, computing. She wrote the first algorithms, and in fact, really, she is the mom of AI. She said one day, I wish to bequeath to the generations a calculus of the nervous system. And she wrote a 55-page paper in the 1840s at the same time Darwin spoke of our history, she spoke of our future. I also wanted you to note her hair. It's kind of cool. <laughs> All right, so there's two doctors in this picture. These are the doctors that did the first heart surgery ever 
One of them's not allowed to touch the patient because of his race. That's not that long ago. Women were chemists, but they were left out. Ellen Swallow Richards did bring ecology to America and begin to be the first person to do uh, all the sewage treatment and data. She's really the science of normal life. Ida B. Wells. You may not have heard of her, but she is one of the, mo one of the greatest American data scientists. And so she really worked on uh, blowing the whistle on the lynching that was happening in the day. And she's really Black Lives Matter data scientist, 1880s. She's incredible. And I put her together with Tesla because we know Tesla, who's I love, immigrant American. Uh, and he was uh, in the Chicago World's Fair. He was super famous during that time. But at the same time, during the Chicago World's Fair, which we all know about, Ida and Frederick Douglass protested the fair. They protested the fair and there's a document online that lists the entire exhibition hall that would have filled this building of all the African-American inventors, pages and pages of inventors and sculptors and philosophers that would have been in that, celebrated. Which is the same as CES this year. No African-Americans on stage, right? Uh, and this is from 2018 and it continues. So this is not true that we have a pipeline problem. We have a bias problem. So whether it's uh, you know, Ida or Susan Wright, the mother of Wilbur and Orville, who was a mechanical genius, or Duca Tesla, her Nikola credits with his physics, or whether it's Jane Addams, who won the Nobel Peace Prize for inventing social work uh, and used data, whether it's you know, Turing and Joan Clark, you know, who cracked the Nazi Enigma codes with others at Bletchley Park, for a minute, just in your mind, Imagine the code breakers, the great mathematicians of World War II who cracked those codes. They're, they're credited with saving 11 million lives and shortening the war by two years, inventing computation at the time. Imagine then in your mind these code breakers from World War II. Do they look like this? Because this is them. And Kate's grandmother and great aunt were code breakers at Bletchley Park. And yet the visitors to this museum are 25 to 1, boys to girls. It's killing the UK economy. She was meeting her great aunt's uh, mother. These are the first digital programmers in America with Eckert and Mockley, the women there. Um, you know, the ENIAC and the UNIVAC didn't program themselves. And there really were women and men astronauts in the beginning, the Mercury 7 and the Mercury 13. The Macintosh team of Steve Jobs was gender balanced. I was, ha I was lucky to be mentored them when we worked on the beginning of smartphones. You know, whether you look at your phone today, you can credit Susan Kerr with all the icons. They come from her imagination in the beginning, or Joanna Hoffman. So look at how gender balanced this team is. I'm telling you this history because our infinite future will be dependent on infinite roots and understanding that every single person in the world can bring themselves forward using these kinds of technologies. And the further back we look, the farther forward we'll see. And if we really know our true history, we won't write those kind of goofy memos like that guy James wrote to my Google colleagues. Right, because Katherine Johnson did calculate the Apollo missions, right? And uh, we do have untold stories of amazing histories. You know, Margaret Hamilton, she stands next to the code. She's a Lego now. She stands at the code that she led the lunar lander, the Apollo command modules, and Skylab. Um, amazing. Uh, her her four-year-old daughter actually helped with some of the challenges in, in, uh, in, in the Apollo missions. How we now I want to turn to one thing, which is Star Wars. So in Star Wars, in 1977, these were gender and race lines. You see Carrie Fisher up there. It gets a little better. But what I want to show you is that we really could use AI, machine learning, and other things to, uh, to help ourselves with media bias. For example, we could use face recognition, natural language processing to help with script writing. And this is a project that Shift 7 team's doing with the USC folks and Gina Davis so that we can get this shipped into the screenwriters' rooms. Because we want to have an inclusive future of work of AI and of democracy. We don't want to have the highest speed internet in the Western Hemisphere in Chattanooga, and yet if you go just down the street, you're in McDowell County, and nobody's making a WeWork makerspace in that building. But people are talented everywhere. It is not the future, it's the same, it's just not distributed right. There's as many open STEM jobs as people in prison in the United States. And a ton of people in prison, when they do coding and, and work uh, that helps them have skills for the future and come out, they get 7% recidivism. In the White House, we hosted the tech meetups. All the tech meetup organizers, many of Startup Grind's uh, folks go to the meetups around the world. And we were bridging with programs and communities. You know, whether it's the Google developer groups all over the world, you could community organize in your town to help many more people come join you. 
uh, we went on a tech jobs tour over the United States. We were basically getting the new kinds of boot camps, three months, not years, to training employers who were hiring from them, mayors who knew what was going on, and the techies in town to welcome them. You know, whether it was in Cleveland with speed mentoring or Memphis with speed mentoring, uh, you know, primary conversation. In Oakland, we had 2,000 people come to the Tech Jobs Tour. All people in the middle of Silicon Valley, but they couldn't figure out their way in. These are the most diverse tech events uh, in our country, and we do them all over the place. This is a startup grind, or this is, sorry, this is a start code team in, uh, in Memphis, and they have a lot of great incubation stuff. This is Appalachia. It's coal miners who now have a coding company. 800 people applied for these 12 jobs. There's fab labs over the world. There's kids coming and ready to work on climate change. There's inventors all over the world. These kids, I encourage you to, to check out this movie. It's uh, science for kids who are working on environmental justice. My goal for everybody here is that you guys really find your passion and also find ways to apply your, your work to the broader challenges of humanity, to climate change and green energy. This is Grace, she's a 10th grader teaching the police chief in New Orleans how to code. You know, so let's do justice, let's make school not boring. Let's get into our high schools and bring this stuff so that the kids can actually work on real stuff. We also have now a community practice, data-driven justice across the United States, just uh, talking to each other regularly. I'll end with this, which is, uh, I was on stage at the Makers Conference with Kimura and uh, Olivia. Olivia had made this really cool game, a Flappy Birds-like game. And Kimura, I wish she was in the Alexa, Siri, or Cortana team, although I wish Cortana would change the name because it's a really sexist image. Um, Kimura was on stage, and she said, you know, what she did for her app was she had the cell phone listen for domestic violence and ask you if you wanted to call the police or you needed help. So that's the kind of stuff that AI can do with us. And so it's an honor to be with you. You are my colleagues in the world. Shift seven means and, if you type it. Shift seven means to shift to seven billion colleagues. And I'd love to work with any of you on all of this. So thanks for all your work and have a great rest of the conference.